Hello students, now welcome back to the course on scientific computing using MATLAB. So now we will go further with this course and we will start the next unit and that is the interpolation and curve fitting. So now we will start with the, the concept of interpolation. So now in the in the interpolation suppose we have data and that is given to me like in the x coordinate and corresponding y coordinate and I can start with 0, 1, 2 up to n. So in this case total I have n plus 1 points and this data is given to me. So, if I want to plot this data, so let us uh, we plot this one. So, this is x axis and this is y axis. So, suppose I start with plotting the point. So, let us uh, it is my x 0. So, this is my x 1, this is x 2, this is x 3 and in the last I have x n. Now, in this case we consider that the difference between x i plus 1 minus x i that is constant. So, I can say that in this case the coordinates the x coordinates are equispaced. It means that this difference is h this difference is h. So, all the points are given to me that are equispaced. Now, for the corresponding x naught, suppose this is the point that is given to me. Corresponding to x1, suppose this is the point. Corresponding to x2, suppose this is the point. Then x3, then x4. So, similarly, I can take different different point and in the end I have suppose this point. So, now I have this my data that is given to me. So, in this case, so first thing is that I want to approximate that which function is represented by all these data points. So, that is the first question and based on this one, now suppose I want to find the value of the, the y at some value in between x3 and x4 or some value in between x0 and xn. So, in this case I want to interpolate the value of the of, of a function based on the given values that is provided to me. So, in this case, so what I want to do? I want first thing is that I want to find interpolating function. So, this is my first criteria. So, how I can find the interpreting function? Interpreting function means that, that I want that my function should pass through all this point. So, this is my point, then it should go like this, then it should go like this, then it will be like this one, then this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. So, what the condition is that the, the, the function I am going to approximate should pass through all these points. And now, once I know this function, then based on this function, I can find the value of x. So, this is the given corresponding x will be given to me. So, based on this x, I am able to find the value of y. So, this is the way we can find or we can approximate the value at a given at a any x that is lying in between x0 to xn. So, this is the way we are going to introduce the concept of interpolation. So, I can write the definition. So, interpolation. So, interpolation means means to find the value of y 
for some interme intermediate value of x. So, that is given to me in x 0 to x n. If x lies outside the interval so that is x 0 and x n, then the process is called extrapolation. So, in that case we will call it extrapolation otherwise this is the interpolation. So, in the extrapolation basically this is the function to given to me and somebody asked me that what will be the value of the function for this x. So, this x is outside this one or somewhere here. So, in that case if I want to approximate the value, so this will be done by using extrapolation and in between this is it is done by using interpolation. So, in this case, so now our topic is the interpolation. So, interpolation is done for two type of data is given to me based on this one. So, this is the equispace data. that is x i and y i. So, this is given to me, but this is equispaced. So, that is that if I take any two x i is the difference of this one. So, this will be h and that will be constant. So, this is the equispaced data and another data is non equispaced or the data is distributed. non uniformly. So, in this case we have the data that is given to me only in the form of x 0, x 1, x n and the difference between these two value is different is not a constant it is varying. So, in that case we have a data that is non uniform distributed and this is the data which is given to me that is equispaced. So, for the so, in this case one is an option is also made that that it is also assumed that that the behavior of y with respect to x is smooth smooth that is there are no sudden variations in the value of y. So, that is the condition given to me that like in this case if you see that I say that the fun the given data is smooth it means that function is changing very smoothly from one point to another and in this case I am not getting a point like this one that this type of data is not there like this. So, sudden change in the data so this is not there in this case so that is not there. So, we are find we are taking the assumption that the given data is given to me the given data is a smooth enough. So, that there is no sudden change in the data anywhere in the given domain. So, that is the condition for this one. Now, so from here based on this one now the condition is that I want to approximate. So, this data is interpolated using the function y is equal to f x. 
So, this is the I will going to introduce the interpolation using the function y equal to f x such that that y is equal to f x satisfy all the data point or I can say only some of them. In the interpolation it is passing through all the point, but I am also going to introduce the other method that is curve fitting. So, in that case only few of them will be satisfied by the given function. Okay. So, this function y is equal to f x is called interpolating function. So, I, I want to find the this interpolating function. So, like suppose I have I have two points and I want to find a functions which is passing through these two points. So, I know that based on two points I can find a line that is line passing through these two points. So, in this case I have a two points then I can interpolate by a linear function having two points this point and this point passing through these points. Suppose I have three points one point is given to me here one is here one is here and suppose I have three points the value is here here and here. So, based on this one I can find a quadratic function. So, this is a, a function of type a x square plus b x plus c this is a linear function. It means that based on the given function I want to approximate or I want to find a function y is equal to f x. So, this f x is a polynomial. So, uh, the simplest one is the polynomial. In this unit or in this course we will find try to find out first that how a polynomial can be in approximated for a given number of match points for given number of data points. So, that is we are going to have this one. Now, so based on this one I will going to introduce some operators before starting the interpolation. So, let us uh, discuss some operators, some operators and their properties. So, the only thing we have to keep in mind that we have a data. So, this data is given to me x i and y i and i is moving from 0, 1, 2 up to n. So, this is n plus 1 points and I am also considering that this is equispaced. It means now I want to introduce. So, let y is equal to f x be some function defined for all x lying between x 0 to x n. So, suppose I the given fun points are given to me and I find approximate a function y is equal to f x which is passing through all this point and then it is also true for all x between x 0 to x n. So, that is given to me. Now, with the based on this one first I will find out forward difference operator. So, forward difference operator means that suppose I have a point here, another point is here, another is here and I apply the operator here, then I will get the, I will use the information, this information or this information. So, ahead of this information I need, need to use. So, this is called the forward difference operator and this is depended by delta. 
So, what is this? If I apply the forward difference operator or the function f at any x i. So, this will be f at x i plus 1 minus f x i. So, that so in this case I want to apply this finite difference operator on any x i. So, suppose this is my x i this is x i plus 1, this is x i minus 1, next is x i plus 2, next is this is x i minus 2 and I apply this operator at this point. So, in this case I am using the value of the function here minus this. So, it is giving me the difference of these values. So, that is called the forward difference operator. It is giving you the difference and forward means it is using the value forward of, forward of that one. So, after that one. So, that is called the forward difference operator. Second one we are use, going to use is backward difference operator. So, short form is FD. So, it is BD and it is represented by the inverted triangle and this is called nebula. So, what is this one? So, suppose I want to apply this at function value at any x i. So, it is what is doing? It is going to use the value before that one. So, backward that is why. So, in this case I apply this one. So, this will be equal to f x i minus f x i minus 1. So, in this case if I want to apply this operator on any function at x i. So, it will use the value before that one. So, and it gives the difference between f x i minus f x i minus 1. So, it, it will use the value just before that one. So, that is called the backward difference operator. Third one we are going to use is central difference operator that is C d. So, this is dependent by small delta. So, what is the small delta? If I apply this one on any f x i, so it will give you the value f f x i plus h by 2 minus value of the function at x i minus h by 2. So, in this case the value is given to me at this value and if I suppose apply here then it will use the value somewhere in between this here and somewhere here. So, it will go one forward and one backward. So, that is why it is called the central. So, this is the half it is going forward and half it is going backward and giving you the difference. So, that is why it is called the central difference. Next is fourth one that is average operator and this is sometimes dependent by mu. So, if I apply here on the function at x i, so it will just give the average at x i plus h by 2 plus f x i minus h by 2 by 2. So, it will give you the forward by half, backward by half, adding and dividing by 2. So, that is why it is called the average operator. So, the next one is the fifth one. So, fifth one is we will call it shift or displacement operator. and we call it represented by E. So, in this case if I apply E on f x then it will give you the value at x plus h. So, it has shifted the function by its next value. So, that is x plus h. So, that is why it is called the shifted operator. And the next one is the sixth one. So, the sixth one is the that we already know that is called the differential operator. So, differential operator 
we have to apply on the function and that is printed by capital D. So, capital D of f x I know then this will be f dash x and that is equal to d by d x of f x. So, the differential operator is applied only for the function that is differentiable function, but before that whatever we have used that we are applying on the given data. So, that is why this all are called, so before that one, so up to the fifth they are all called the difference operator because they are applying on the data and giving you the difference. The last one is the differential operator that is only given for the function that is a differentiable function. So, that is the few operator we have uh, introduced here. Now, and we will use this operators at the different different level to find out the interpolating polynomials. Now, we will introduce another concept of linearity and commutivity of operators. It means that whatever the operator we have defined, so if they are the linear operator, it means that so above operators, so satisfy the properties of linearity and commutativity. So, what is the meaning of linearity? Linearity means that I have two operators, suppose I represent by L1 and L2. So, it may be a forward operator, central operator, uh, shift operator and suppose I have two operator and then I apply this multiply by some constant L1 plus multiply by some constant L2 and if I apply on this uh, function f x, then I will get a L1 f x plus b L2 f x. So, if this is satisfied, then we call that the this operator is a linear operator. So, that is the concept of linearity. And the second one is the commutative. So, commute means that I have a L1, L2 and I apply on f x. So, that is al always equal to L2, L1, f x. So, it does not matter you apply L2 first and then L1 or L1 first L2. So, that is also if this is also satisfied, then we say that this operator L1 and L2 are commutative, they can commute and this here the L1 and L2 are called linear. So, above all the fun all the operator I have defined, they are also satisfying all these properties. So, suppose I apply this uh, forward operator in the backward, so it does not matter that you apply it forward first and the backward or backward first and the forward. So, this operator is the linear operator. For example, so, for example, I take forward operator and backward operator. Okay. So, what I do is that I apply, I take a function f x. So, I have a function. Now, I want to apply this, then this on any f x i. So, this one I am doing. So, let us find out what will happen. So, first I am applying the backward and then forward. So, backward means I will get f x i minus f x i minus 1. So, this is my uh, backward difference operator applying on this one. So, it gives the value of f x minus the previous value. So, that is why the backward. Now, I apply the forward. So, this will be forward applying on f x i minus forward applying on f x minus 1, because these are these satisfy the linear property. These operators are linear, so I can take this one in, in the separate form. Now, from 
forward operator it will be f x i plus 1 minus f x i right. So, this is forward I have applied here minus and this will become f x i minus 1 I am applying. So, I will get f at x i minus f at x i minus 1. So, from here I will get the value f at x i plus 1 minus 2 times f x i plus f x i minus 1. So, I will get this value based on this operator. Now, if I change the order of this operator and suppose I apply backward and the forward f x i. So, let us see what will happen. So, in, the, in this case this is backward and the forward. So, forward will be x i plus 1 minus f x i. So, this is the forward operator and this operator I can take inside. So, this will be f x i plus 1 minus f x i. Now, I can apply the for backward operator for f x i plus 1 it means I will get the value of f at x i plus 1 minus at f x i. So, I am going the backward one step backward then for this one it will be f x i minus of f x i minus 1. So, now from here, so using this one if you see it becomes f x i plus 1 minus 2 times f x i plus f x i minus 1. So, in this case I will get the same value I am getting from here. So, it does not matter that I apply the forward operator first and the backward or the backward operator first forward because I am getting this value. So, from here I can say that forward operator and backward operator are commutative. So, they are commutative and linearity we have used here this place that the function is linear. So, I can take inside and that will be applied. So, from here I can say that these two operators are commutative. Similarly, I can discuss with the other operators may be forward with the central or central with backward and so on. So, that we can do in the examples or in the assignments that how whether these are commutative or not. Whoever the satisfying this condition that is called the commutative. So, from here I can say that the forward operator and the backward operator are commutative in nature. Right. So, so this is our uh, starting point with the uh, operator. So, I will stop here. So, today we uh, start with the concept of interpolation for the given data that how we can. So, in this case we want to interpolate a, a function that is y equal to f x for the given data to approximate the value of the function at any point in between the data. So, that is called the interpolation and we have started with some another to, uh, basics about the that how we can define the operators that is finite difference operators and then we have also discussed the differential operator. So, in the next class we, uh, in the next lecture we will continue with this one. So, thanks for watching uh, thanks very much. Thank you.